Hello everybody, thanks a lot for inviting me. My name is Gianluca Antonelli, I'm from the University of Cassino in Italy and ISME. I'm going to talk in the next half an hour about the research activities of this consortium, especially of course in marine robotics and that's the reason why we are here in this uh, uh, conference, of course. So basically, let me switch just a moment the scene. So basically, this is a center composed by uh, nine Italian universities with a common interest in uh, those uh, research topics. Uh, where we are, uh, let us not give for granted that you know where all those universities are. First of all, uh, from the north to the south, uh, we have uh, the University of Genoa, which is also the legal entity of uh, the consortium, then Bologna, Firenze, Pisa, Ancona, Rome, Sapienza, Cassino, which is also uh, my institution, I belong to the University of Cassino, uh, Lecce and Cosenza. Uh, as said, we are nine Italian universities. Uh, this consortium has been established in uh, 1999. The reason is uh, to share the motivation rather than the reason is to share our know-how, our infrastructures, our equipments, and to make synergy to participate to the calls, not only the national one, but especially the uh, European uh, so here you can see a little bit of our uh, equipment. Some of them will be uh, shown in action later on. Our skills or uh, radar applications slash applications, uh, we do have uh, expertise in uh, and, and, uh, GC, so navigation, guidance and control, intervention, acoustics, uh, mechanical design, networking and underwater uh, Internet of Things and um, in for our monitoring and surveillance. Um, since, uh, I mean, in the last years, uh, we also uh, bring in uh, expertise in artificial intelligence together with classical and uh, uh, modeling and identification. Uh, expertise in mission planning and execution and man-machine interface for single uh, and multiple robots. So basically, let me say that uh, our know-how uh, can be uh, considered under the head of uh, system and control engineering, applied mechanics and computer science. We do have uh, an agreement uh, with uh, the Italian Navy. Uh, since, uh, let me say, a decade, ISME and the Centro per il Supporto alla Sperimentazione Navale, which is uh, the Italian name for this uh, uh, military research center, which is the center to support the naval experimentation, we uh, created together the Sea Lab. So the, here we, you can see in this um, uh, frame the dock, which is located in Spezia, yet another uh, town in, in the north of Italy, uh, just together close to the uh, CMRE, so the NATO Research Center, they share some of the spaces, the cantina basically, and the dock. Uh, what are the topics that are um, executed together with the Italian Navy. Here I just highlighted the, the keywords. So energy harvesting, monitoring intervention, inter interoperability, detection, classification, uh, self-reliance, communication, mission planning. So the, 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 the Italian Navy is interested in more or less in the same keywords as us as uh, research uh, community. And those are some projects run together within uh, this consortium. <clears throat> now, I'm going to talk a little bit about our uh, experience uh, by picking up some uh, projects, some sample projects. Here, 
I have uh, just uh, a map of all the logos of, uh, uh, not all, but uh, some of the logos of the projects run in the last, uh, let me say, 10, 15 years. And uh, I like to say that uh, in uh, a project, the most uh, difficult and rewarding part uh, is design the logo. I mean, a good logo is already 50% of the project. Now, let us start with uh, one of the projects uh, that I selected. For example, uh, we must or why must. So widely scalable mobile underwater sonar technology. This is the logo and uh, the um, coordinator for this um, project has been uh, Giovanni Indiveri from uh, the University of Genoa. At that time it was with the University of Salento in Lecce, uh, which is also part of ISNA, and then he moved back to uh, Genova. Uh, here we have uh, a uh, picture, but I'm going to show a video which explain a little bit better what was about. Uh, here we can appreciate a streamer of hydrophone, which is now just uh, um, just uh, uh, collected in order to, to before the release in the water then this is a, a just a streamer so here we have the video i just uh, leave out myself from the screen here we are okay and so here we have the videos of the final demo the applications for this project was a geophysical and geotechnical survey. So the idea is that if we have autonomous, coordinated autonomous underwater vehicles, which each carry a streamer of hydrophones, we can read the echo from a, a sparker more closely to the bottom and, and so with a higher uh, signal to noise ratio and even we can uh, for example uh, decide uh, with a more flexible way the configuration with respect to the current state of art which consists in having all the hydrophone at the surface just uh, um, uh, tied together uh, here we see some of uh, um, extracted uh, I mean, uh, images from the test made in Sines in uh, Portugal as all the European project uh, we uh, made a consortium of several uh, European uh, companies and uh, universities in order to run the project and in the final uh, demo we had the two sparkers run on autonomous uh, catamaran, one developed uh, within ISME and the other by the Portuguese uh, colleagues, and several underwater vehicles. Uh, one of them used for the localization, which was on the surface, and the other underwater, all coordinated by means of atomic clock, because the coordination was crucial for the quality of uh, the data. So, here you see that uh, I mean sometimes you see people with shirts sometimes with scarves because I mean for the project for the integration weeks we went several times in Sinesh in winter or in uh, summer time and uh, the final demo uh, was quite demanding uh, with uh, several hours of operations going on then another project, in this case uh, you see uh, my face because I was the local coordinator of a European project uh, named EUMR, European Marine uh, Robotics, funded again by the European Union uh, within the H2020 uh, program, uh, which was a, a kind of a, a strange project in the sense that here, uh, together with the research activities, so we had to, um, to build a network and to open our research infrastructures to third-party researchers who could have been interested in running experiments with our equipment. The coordinator uh, has been João Sousa from the University of Porto. Here you can see I mean, several partners, 15, but ISME was uh, as one partner, so we had uh, additional nine partners, in fact. And uh, uh, just as a sample of the old activities, was a very uh, 
long project. Just as a sample, I uh, show you one uh, experiment run at the C lab, so at uh, uh, in Italy, from researchers coming from uh, the Jacobs University, so from uh, the German uh, University. Here we can appreciate the infrastructures. This is the vehicle of the University of Florence. Uh, researchers are wearing a uh, mask. I mean, part of the project has been run within the pandemic period. And this, of course, uh, caused several delays and, and some activities have been run more or less remotely. Uh, but I think that uh, I, can, I can say that we uh, achieved the objectives even in the pandemic period. So, for example, in this case, uh, the technical aspect is not very important, but what is important is here you see Riccardo Constanzi from Pisa and Alessandro Ridolfi from Florence that are organizing the experiments together with uh, Francesco Morelli, which uh, is uh, a, now a researcher at uh, the Jacobs University. And uh, so we were, I mean, doubly satisfied uh, because we were able to handle, I mean, let me say the emergency uh, period and to continue the experiments that we committed to when we started the project in the beginning of uh, the, the period. So here we can see from the, the, the top, the dock of uh, the sea lab, which is quite convenient because the area is cleared, because no private traffic can go there. So it's, it, it's convenient for uh, a preliminary wet test of everything, because everything is close to, to the infrastructure. Okay, so this is a little bit too detailed. Let me move on next project, and here I am again. Well, again, I am here because I was the local responsible within ISME for uh, this project. The coordinator was uh, Jeremy Ganset from a Belgian company, Space Applications, and the uh, funding agency was again the European Union. Uh, this snapshot uh, explains everything. I have a video later on. But basically, the idea is to have a teleoperation of uh, an uh, underwater intervention uh, mission by means of uh, a uh, not so reliable communication channel. So uh, we uh, would have been able to uh, handle communication latency, but even interruption. So let me show this uh, within the video. Here we have uh, the, the nice uh, logo again. And the motivation for this project is to try to move as many uh, members of the crew as possible on shore so that uh, the offshore crew is limited and with an increase of safety and a possible reduction of costs. So the vehicle is a tethered rob, it's not totally autonomous, but the operator on shore gives a command to the underwater vehicle with whatever main machine in interface we can imagine. In this case, we had an exoskeleton by a satellite. So on purpose, we interrupted the communication during our test, during our uh, project. And here we see the, the graphical uh, rendering of uh, the idea. So the operator may have been used touch screen or joystick or exoskeleton uh, in particular the, the, our partner uh, space applications they developed an exoskeleton in order to 
move. Uh, now it was not a direct, a, a massive slave operation. We had a cognitive engine in order to understand the operator uh, movement and to give only to the high-level commands to the low-level arm. And then the low-level arm should uh, have been implemented some kind of a local autonomy or intelligence or whatever we can call it in order to just implement the high-level command and to take uh, care of, for example, the constraints given by the mechanical limits, obstacle avoidance, and so on. Okay, so here we can see the uh, exoskeleton, uh, the virtual reality developed uh, in, uh, in Belgium. This is uh, just uh, a little bit of gym of the vehicle under the water. We can appreciate the skid because the ROV is commercial and uh, this skid has been added. Uh, during the project with the additional electronic and motors and sensing part. Now here we see the uh, preliminary test. I'm sorry, I don't know why this went on next page. Here we can see the preliminary test of the uh, interaction control scheme. Actually, this was uh, an uh, admittance control scheme because uh, those are uh, position control joints. Here, this small uh, blue cylinder is the first tone sensor, and we are testing uh, the interaction, in particular Enrico Simetti from the University of Genoa. Uh, here, we are uh, testing the full body uh, coordinated control uh, in a task priority um, fashion, in particular we worked at the University of Cassino in this way. So the, the, the guys are moving the base and uh, uh, the end effector should be in front of uh, the panel. Now we see the skid without the rob, just uh, on, the, on the deck of the, of the vessel. And here you can see the configuration with two arms and the two dexterous ends developed by uh, one of the partners, by uh, Graltec. Now, the final demo, those are the only videos that you have of the final demo. Those have been, have been taken by another small rob, manually guided. And you can see that the, the video is really moving a lot because there were quite some current. In the end, uh, the dexterous end uh, had some technical problems, so here we just have a mock-up end, and we decided to grasp the structure. So the second arm is grasping the structure, while the first is uh, rotating the valve. This was the mission that we decided. And then we decided to, to test several times the operation and to intentionally um, and to intentionally also impact with the, the structure. Uh, another uh, interesting project uh, run again under the funding scheme of European Community is uh, Robust, which uh, consider underwater mining the local uh, uh, coordinator is uh, Enrico Simetti from the University of Genova and uh, coordinator of uh, the overall project uh, is uh, T, uh, TWI, the Welding Institute from UK, we changed three, co three coordinators. This is the vehicle that uh, we are going to see now in a nice video. The video focus uh, on the part that we developed, so uh, we are focusing mainly on the uh, control of the vehicle and the control of the arm of the vehicle. So basically here, let me go out from the screen here. Trust me, there is a vehicle that is coming. This vehicle uh, is composed by three vehicles that has been uh, grouped together and uh, here we are. And uh, an arm which is uh, carrying on a sensor in order to implement on-site spe spectroscopy. And my big achievement is to pronounce this word without mistake after uh, four years uh, of project. Now, the vehicle uh, is landing, and during the landing, uh, it needs to take the target uh, always in the field of view. So basically, here we see the target, uh, which is a manganese nodule, 
uh, with it, that is the objective of our mission and then uh, the robot now is in a home in position let me say in a kind of a garage is going to be released and to put the laser just uh, close enough to the manganese nodule in order to implement the uh, sensor readings. I'm going a little bit fast because now this is a ground-based arm. Uh, it's not uh, so exciting from the robotic aspect. And uh, here, actually, this is carrying a, a fake sensor uh, for this specific uh, video. Uh, there were some partners in charge of developing this. And we were in charge mainly of the control, then the Spanish partner of the University of Girona, or Coronis Computing of the Vision Aspect. Okay. Again, let me continue. I can come back on the images. Uh, Passport is a, a current running European project. The coordinator is from uh, an uh, Italian company named Systematic, and the local coordinator from ISME is Alessandro Ridolfi from the University of Firenze, so Florence. And the main uh, uh, scientific aspect of uh, this project is uh, handling with multiple air and underwater vehicles in order to implement, to improve, let me say, safety and security in uh, port areas. Concerning the ISME activities uh, that are allocated to the University of Genoa, we have uh, target recognition uh, and to detect and geocalize the, the target, bathymetry and occupancy map. So here we are bringing uh, artificial intelligence uh, in a European project. Let me say more or less one of the first time for us that we are doing it. We, uh, uh, as ISME, we worked a lot uh, in intervention. So basically here we, you, can, you can see a very old video for one of the first uh, uh, European projects uh, in uh, underwater intervention. And uh, uh, this was Amadeus, whose coordinator was David Delane for the area, from the area of Watt University in UK, and the local coordinator, Professor uh, Pino Casalino from the University of Genova. Here you see a coordinator uh, control made in a pool. This was uh, more than uh, 20 years ago. And as I said, we like a lot to make intervention here you can appreciate uh, some of the projects uh, in which uh, we had uh, intervention rules and uh, some videos uh, of uh, some tests. Uh, bottom left uh, is the pool of the University of Girona during the Trident project, so more than 10 years ago, for uh, a um, project, uh, Trident, uh, devoted to some applications, but uh, the, the final demo was a black box uh, recovery and here you can see the the D, the pool uh, test and uh, here you can see the camera mounted uh, on the vehicle in an arbor uh, so those experiments uh, run in an arbor here you can see a national project in which uh, we had uh, some um, uh, manipulation tasks and so for example here you can appreciate uh, automatic uh, uh, grasping of uh, well a yellow cylinder in this case uh, automatic grasping and uh, bring it back to the to to the surface uh, this is a topic uh, i mean we we, we enjoy and uh, we do quite a lot uh, other uh, topics were i mean we worked and we have some experience uh, we had several projects uh, um, involving divers and basically well the robots and the technology can be of help to the divers here uh, i collected uh, uh, some snapshots from uh, several projects both uh, national and uh, european whose uh, uh, main uh, 
responsibles are two colleagues, David Scaradozzi from um, the node of Ancona and Alessandro Casavola from the node of uh, Calabria. And we can appreciate augmented reality of a uh, tablet with additional information, uh, geolocalization and, and so on. So this is also a topic where, I mean, there is uh, quite some activities uh, within uh, ISME. Another big topic is, of course, uh, the acoustics and, uh, for example, communication or localization. Here we have uh, two main uh, researchers, two main uh, colleagues involved in, the, in those topics, Andrea Caiti from the University of Pisa and Chiara Petroli from the University of Roma Sapienza. In particular, uh, one uh, project, uh, Sunrise, uh, was an European project led by uh, Chiara, uh, which was a, a cascade funding project. So basically, uh, those kind of projects, uh, the European community give to a, a consortium uh, some fundings with the constraints to publish some research call to uh, handle, to manage some other research uh, projects whose uh, researchers, of course, will not be part of the consortium. So this is the so-called cascade funding. And there is quite a certain experience within ISME of uh, acoustics, but also about cas uh, cascade funding. So we, we have been involved in several projects uh, with this kind of uh, shape. Single autonomy, here uh, you can see some vehicles uh, which belong to the ISME partners. For example, uh, this is a catamaran uh, developed in Genova, and, uh, which is autonomous. Uh, here you can see a configuration where there are you know, some big boxes uh, on, the, on the deck, but uh, uh, those are the sparkers. Uh, so those uh, big volume, actually also quite weight objects, uh, were necessary in YMAS in order to produce the acoustic source. But uh, of course, the catamaran is totally flat and can be used for several purposes. Here we can see uh, a um, uh, wave harvesting energy vehicle uh, developed uh, within one of uh, the project with the uh, Italian Navy. Uh, this is Typhoon. This vehicle has been uh, designed and built at the University of uh, Firenze. Uh, this also has been developed at the University of Firenze. The name is uh, Filippo. And uh, now uh, this is a nice picture because uh, uh, this is an historical arbor in the wonderful town of Firenze. So it's, uh, it's quite a nice sightseeing for uh, this additional vehicle developed again at the University of uh, Firenze. Multi vehicle vehicles control, uh, more or less coming to an end, and uh, we worked a lot in projects uh, involved coordination, cooperation, but uh, I just decided to uh, discuss with one snapshot of one currently running project with the Italian Navy. So here the coordinator for ISME is uh, Andrea Caiti from the University of Pisa. And the idea is that uh, we do have uh, an intruder, which of course uh, moving under the water makes noise uh, and uh, several uh, vehicles it should be able to uh, detect uh, the exposition of the noise. Of course, uh, it, the problem is the accuracy uh, that is uh, required by, in this case, the end user, which is uh, really demanding because uh, um, we can hear the movement of the intruder even several kilometers away, up to 50 kilometers, depending of, of uh, his speed. The uh, hydrophones, which are carried by each of the vehicle, can more or less, uh, let me say, uh, identify where the noise is, uh, is coming from. And then uh, by implementing consensus-based uh, uh, algorithms, they need to exactly say 
where is the intruder and what is his velocity. So the problem is not uh, to say more or less where is coming from the, 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 the noise, because this can be done with one single vehicle. The problem is in the accuracy required. And so uh, all the information uh, arrive asynchronously and with a certain delay given by the fact that the, the acoustic uh, uh, travel at uh, 1500 uh, meters per, per second and the, the, the source is uh, several kilometers away and the vehicles are also uh, several kilometers far away one each other. So missing packets uh, and so on. So something that uh, uh, makes it uh, uh, really challenged. We are more or less uh, at the end of uh, uh, the theoretical and uh, simulative uh, part and uh, in next year so we are going in the sea to implement it. As said, uh, I'm going to the end. Uh, I would like to stress the fact uh, that we are universities. So we are quite proud uh, of the fact that uh, our mission is also, but I would say is mainly, to uh, give uh, uh, higher education to the people. So in, uh, in the last 20 years, we can say that uh, we had a lot of tons, let me say, master students, uh, less than tons, so some, uh, several PhD, um, graduated PhD in, of course, marine, topics to uh, marine robotics topics, some Navy officers, applied industrial researchers, and, of course, academics, as I am. I, I, I worked with uh, ISME since the beginning. But also, uh, I mean, our, I mean, members of ISME have been as of the department and also several of them are also IEEE uh, fellows. So this is something we are quite proud of. Uh, not only uh, academic, not only theory, but several spin-off uh, so the light within ISME. I think that the most famous is Graltech, uh, and it's also the, the, the oldest among uh, those, because uh, uh, something like 20 years ago, now is a company that is running on its own and with, with a lot of success. We have several European projects. Uh, we had uh, several European projects with them and several now running projects. Then Appia from the uh, University of Salento, Lecce, NDM from the University of Firenze, Vucens from the University of Rome, Sapienza, and uh, finally, the youngest is Everybotics. I'm the legal representative of this one from my university, from the University of Cassini. I uh, finished. Uh, would like to, to thank uh, all the colleagues. I made a presentation where my work was uh, quite uh, limited because I presented the work of uh, the community. Of course, I cannot talk about the old Italian community, but uh, a large part of the, of the community is within ISME, and uh, we enjoy working together and uh, this kind of project. Here we see the lab of Graltech during some experiment of Robust. Uh, this is uh, Weimast. Here we are in uh, Sinesh. Uh, here we are uh, in Marseille. And yes, I'm wearing the same shirt intentionally with uh, Paolo, Enrico and Francesco. Now, uh, I would like to, to spend uh, the last few words uh, to uh, Professor uh, Giuseppe Caselino Pino for all of us uh, who passed away uh, last month. Pino was uh, a, a person really uh, outstanding. I'm not talking about the scientific aspect because this is something that I mean is not uh, to me to say and we all know that he gave a lot of contributions to um, uh, automatic control and robotics and marine robotics uh, topics but this is not to I mean important, let me say. It was an outstanding person from uh, the human aspect and uh, we will all uh, miss Pino. So I would like just to, 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 to leave uh, with this uh, video a thought about uh, uh, in, in his memory and I would like let me also to thank him for the example that he gave uh, to all of us. Now I'm uh, I finished. Let me okay. 
let me come back to the big screen. Uh, if uh, everything uh, is going well, uh, I should be in uh, connected uh, remotely. Uh, now, uh, this should be something like uh, five, six uh, in the morning, but it's not. I mean, it's not a problem. I should be somewhere in one of the of the windows close by. I would like to to thank again the organizer for inviting me, and I would like to apologize again for not being in person. It has been a pleasure for me to give this uh, small talk, and I hope. Uh, you enjoyed it. I hope you also enjoyed the conference because this should be the last day uh, of the conference and I hope to uh, attend uh, next time. Thank you to all.